Hi everyone! During our recent cruise aboard the Allure of the Seas, we embarked from the brand new Royal Caribbean Terminal at Galveston, Texas. It was opened just a few months ago, and we wanted to share what parking at the terminal as well as how the embarkation process was like. For us, it was not without some headaches, so hopefully the information we provide in this video will help you avoid some of the mistakes we made and also save some money. Now before this terminal was built, you would embark a Royal Caribbean cruise via Terminal 2, which is now called Terminal 28, which is right next to the Carnival Cruises Terminal, which was called Terminal 1, and is now called Terminal 25. So it's very important that you put in either Pier 10 Galveston or Royal Caribbean International Terminal 10 in Google Maps. Anything else may well take you to the wrong terminal. Also, if you're driving to Galveston like we were, there are several parking lots where you could park nearby. So let's take a look at the prices, which are for a seven night cruise. There's the North lot, which is the closest to the terminal building. That costs $169 for the seven day cruise. There is also covered parking at the North lot right next to the terminal building, which will sell you back $207. It's also in high demand, so you have to book early to get one of those spots. Then there is the South lot, which is actually across the street from Royal Caribbean Way, and that's $154. The Pier 14 lot is across the water to the west of the North lot, and that also costs $154 to park. There is also limited indoor parking there for $191. An important thing to know is that there is free shuttle service for all the lots other than the premium cover lot right across from the terminal. So in our opinion, it's not really worth the extra money to park at the North lot you would purchase parking on portofgalveston.com and you can save some money two ways. One is to sign up for their loyalty account. You will get 50 points right away, which you can redeem for $5 off at the payment page. You also earn about 10% back of what you spend for parking that can be redeemed for your next visit. The second way to save money is to enter a coupon discount code. We use the code New Year 2023 to save another $5. If you know of a better promo code for the Port of Galveston parking, please do post it as a comment and let us know how much the discount is. By the way, for some reason, the rates for parking at the new Royal Caribbean Terminal is quite a bit higher than parking for Carnival or Princess at the Port of Galveston. For example, these are the rates for a seven night cruise aboard a Carnival Jubilee later this year which run about $45 to $60 cheaper for seven night. And now let's get to the mistake we made. So we reserve parking at the Pier 14 lot. If you do the same, the important part is to just keep going on 14th Street and you will get right into the parking lot. There was no sign at all that gave any indication that the lot there is the Pier 14 lot. So that is something Royal Caribbean or the Port of Galveston should look into. So we missed the entrance to the Pier 14 lot and then had to keep going on Royal Caribbean Way. Now because so many guests were disembarking and also on the way to go on the ship, we were stuck. And it took over 30 minutes before we were able to make it out of the loop and get to lot 14. Now if you reserve parking for the south lot, you could turn right into the lot immediately after Harbor Side Drive. If you miss it, you still have another chance to turn right into it later. But do not turn left towards the terminal. You will only turn left into either Royal Caribbean Circle or, or Royal Caribbean Way if you reserve the North Lot. So we finally get to Pier 14. There was a shuttle right there with a friendly driver who will load your luggage for you. Then it is about a five minute ride to the terminal where the driver will unload your luggage for you as well. It's a free service, but we appreciated the luggage handling and gave the driver some cash tip. Now we're carrying our luggages in ourselves, kind of like carry-ons for an airplane. 
But if you have large suitcases, we definitely recommend that you check them in with a porter so you don't have to lug them around in the terminal. And then later on, your luggages will be delivered outside your stateroom. But make sure that you have your passports and medications with you on person. Do not put them in those suitcases you check in with the porter. If you're wondering about the taxi costs from here to either the Houston lobby or the Bush Intercontinental Airport, here were the prices we saw posted at the taxi stand. So now, here we are at the brand new Royal Caribbean Cruise Terminal. Make sure you have your Royal Caribbean app ready and showing your boarding pass here to enter. Now take a look at what's like inside. Once you're ready, it's time to go upstairs via these escalators and check in. Here we were a little surprised at how large the crowd was and the wait, which was a little longer than what we were used to at Fort Lauderdale. This is where you would show the Royal Caribbean check-in agent your boarding pass via the app, and most importantly, your passports, which must match the information you provided when booking the cruise. So after you check in, it's time to go through security. It's an airport type security, so you won't want to go through the metal detector with anything in your pockets. Also, your luggage and bags will be scanned here. Make sure you're not bringing anything flammable. But it's just fine to bring bottles of liquid more than 3 ounces, like bottled water, conditioner, or mouthwash. After you go through security, there is an area where you can sit if the ship is not ready for boarding yet. There are restrooms, vending machines, and some photo ops as well. Take a look. Then it was time to go on the gangway to start our 7 night cruise on the Allure of the Seas. Check out the views. So after you get on the ship, you should complete your mandatory safety briefing. You will go to the muster station area indicated on your boarding pass. Ours was on deck 4 in front of Studio B. Once there, show the crew member your boarding pass on the app. They will scan it and just like that, you're done with the safety briefing. Now if it's before 1pm, your cabin might not be ready yet, so it's time for lunch. The Windjammer Buffet is always extremely busy for embarkation lunch, so you might want to eat at the Solarium Bistro instead. And that was what parking and embarkation were like at the new Royal Caribbean Terminal 10 at the Port of Galveston, as well as some hopefully useful information to make it a smoother process for your next cruise from here. If you have any questions or comments, please post and we'd be happy to reply. And if you found that video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. Happy cruising, and we'll see you soon in another video.